there, there's no need for that. Oh, there Pardon? is. Well, there, there, <laughs> there, uh, there is no need for an intimidate check either, because uh, as the the witness of like all the display of power combined with all of you in her home, you're going to insist she will uh, begin uh, backing up. Uh, Bjorni will turn to look at you five and say, "You five, should you wish to avoid whatever fate might befall you." Need to leave here. Perhaps head back to my tavern. You'll be welcome there, at least for the night. I'll lead these two and get the father out of here, at least for now. He pinches the bridge of his wide nose. Against my better judgment. What should you do with the arrows? So now we stand and fight. No. No, we don't go, no. We don't go to slaughter 100 heads. <laughs> That's just, just what think of the XP want, are. Think of the XP. If they're not challenging yeah. to us, we don't get XP. Yeah, we, is like, we're, we could we're not going to fight the people of the town. We're, no. we're not even using experience points in this system. <laughs> <laughs> so Ritual how about take it out there and we go like, we. Yeah, something like that. Sounds good. Yes. Well, and possibly I mean, talk to the senator if she if she's if she hasn't bothered to go out of the house. She has been alerted, right? And she'll see she, the fire in the house anyway. So uh, why don't we go off to that map we have with the bandits and let her deal with this? I don't I don't really I don't want to become too much of a profile to these people. I actually and I don't think there's much we can do right now here anyway. We have a map with the bandits. They said that the bandits something something. I think we should help, uh, head to the Melkor estate first. Yeah, the thing is, if we disappear now and the townsfolk are like, wait a minute, they ran away with the family, they had something to do with this as well, then, well, yeah. once we come back, we're going to get murdered. I think we should stay in town for today and then leave tomorrow, maybe. Yeah. Even I mean, if we do Melkor nothing estate, else... people didn't shoot that druid. So, Bjorni will look back at you so, and say, if nothing else, you five are welcome in my tavern. At least for the night, my wife knows. And if nothing else, you'll be able to travel better with fresh minds. Especially if you're going out anywhere. Sure. What the hell? That is true. The Dwarven Tavern. And thank you, buddy. Bjorni will <coughs> uh, nod and uh, sigh to himself. And he'll actually mumble in Dwarven. Uh, Hiram will understand. Uh, Bjorni's like, why did I get involved in this? <laughs> and then he'll like chuckle uh. ruefully to himself. You know, that's fine. No, he's involved. He can't get out. <laughs> yes. uh, in that case, you five then uh, can leave and uh, whisk your way. Uh, basically, like, the night will fall. Like, the sun will fucking set by the time you, like, scurry yourselves around <laughs> to get back to the town center. <laughs> Was my move <mover> accurate? <laughs> <laughs> yes, something like that. Whee! Is there an upper floor to the tavern? Yes, it's a two-story <laughs> stone building with several stained glass windows. Right. Uh, Fargus will sort of sit by a window, uh, looking towards the hunter's house on the yes. top floor. It uh, it definitely does go ablaze. Yeah. Uh, as you uh, as you folks do enter the uh, the rampant badger, uh, obviously. Uh, Bjorni is not there, the proprietor. Instead, his wife ends up being behind the counter. And there's several patrons and lodgers who are enjoying the, uh, the evening meal. Uh, one of the individuals who's actually sitting at the bar, though, having a glass of, appears to be rum, or brandy, or ale, or whatever the hell crazy wizard people might drink, is a familiar face from last chapter, an ostentatiously robed man, Who's just calmly sitting on a stool, like staring ahead, not even bothering to chat with any of the patrons or uh, the uh, or the dwarf behind the counter. Oh. <laughs> uh, Here, we'll walk up to him. Leon will be here instead. See, Lord uh, Inator will uh, turn his head and actually uh, look down at Duel here and say, "Ah, uh, we'll fish out the here. amulet." Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Tell me what happened. He'll he'll tell the story how we came, saw the land destroyed, we got in, saw that, that the rune of the Archmage had been tampered with by someone and that, that they also made a golem go mad and released a basilisk. 
say that we repaired the rune and uh, made sure that it still was, was working and protecting the land and then returned back while we uh, got attacked by by more of these damned bandits and uh, and then, then came here. The rune is repaired and uh, even though the tower is undefended as the wizards were killed by something have uh, yeah it seems more. that the druids from the forest have really done an incursion this time. If they manage to even to even uh, to even destroy one of the or or just damage one of the archmage's own runes, at least the ward now has been put back to full strength. For now. And for the basilisk, it escaped into the wild wood. Lord Inator then actually like gives like a, a shrug, really like oh, well, not my problem then. You know, not, a, the, that seems to be a, a fitting reward for the druid who, who did this. Managed to repair the magical node. That is fantastic <laughs> work, and it actually is something I would expect of you, Duo Hiram. I have looked into the one who would bear the amulet after I gave it. I learned that you were part of the Shapers Guild and actually carry a good reputation behind you. Suffice to say that the Archmage is pleased with your actions. Sure, sort of nods, giving a slight smile. She's being complimented. And I do believe, and uh, at this point, Lord Inator will actually give you folks, like, the first, like, respectful look he's given you. I do believe what you gained from the tower, no survivors? Sure, nods. Sadly, no. That what you gain from the tower is worth the cost of hiring you. You have proven yourselves to be useful, and with trustful, dependable individuals like Dwohiram, we can even overlook some of the unfortunate elements. Slightly glancing over at Tempest. As Leon steps up the way to reveal him. <laughs> Tempest smiles and sort of, you know, taps his goggles on his head. Indeed, Dwohiram, the Archmage has seen fit to reward you for your services, and my superior does offer his condolences for what transpired in your settlement. He frowned so deeply at the memory, looking away, biting his lip bitterly. We hope that you make peace with what's occurred by continuing to serve the Empire, and in so doing, thwart the High Druid's plans for this age. He nods. Very determined. Yes. Oh, I will do that and more. And I will see fit to give you personally an extra boon as well. Lord Inator uh, fishes into his robe and uh, will pull out uh, an adventure tier rune, which he will gift to Dwohiram. Uh, an adventure tier rune is a uh, uh, page two eighty four of the core rulebook. It can be used on any weapon, armor, or spellcasting implement as a quick action. Uh, it would provide a plus one bonus to say your spellcasting implement. Provide a plus one bonus to your attack rolls and damage rolls. And in addition, you would roll on that 1d100 table to see what other random benefit you get from the rune. Alright. Uh, sure. So, do I pick now, or...? No, you wouldn't pick now. You would, pick, you would right. roll the die whenever you use the rune, and then that would be your result. And it lasts for one battle. It lasts for a battle, yes. It could be used as a yeah. quick action. Alright. Sure. Yes, Lord Inator gives that to Dwohiram. Sure. Well, I'll look at it in nice lenses. I will make sure it sees good use. Excellent. Now, do try to avoid being outside. I heard quite the clatter out there, and you simply cannot stop these peasants once they get an idea in their minds. He goes yes, back to giving a disparaging look. If only that idea was fighting the druid Ajax. Perhaps. Although I am still hesitant to think that... Pauses. Hope and more. You know it has happened before. You know what happened. It's off. Well... 
Looks like I have other nerds to check. I only stayed here on the off chance I might get a report from you. A very, very positive one, I might add. Congratulations again. God, is there anything to thwart their plans? Yes, for the Empire, Vohirum, and you others. For the Empire. For the Empire. <laughs> 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 I, I'm not there. I, I said that seriously, <laughs> and then like I thought about it and started chuckling. All right, as that's getting resolved, I do have something for you, Tempest. I, what? Yes. While you're standing there, uh, sort of awkwardly a bit, you know, Lord Anator being there, talking and chatting, up particularly uh, Dwohirum, uh, you turn your head to look around the rest of the tavern, and you notice a table of four adventuring dwarves eating and being merry until one of them catches eyes with you. Please stop. And that's when the clamor abruptly stops. I'll go ahead and move them. Excellent. Like, all, all, all of their eating and drinking and merriment falls silent. The one who notices you, like, edges the others and they all rotate their heads and blink, looking at Tempest. Tempest just keeps the look. He's not turning away. <laughs> yes. The uh, the one who spotted you first fulls, furls out a, uh, a paper from his backpack. Uh, he, like, lays it on the table, and all four of them lean over and consult it, looking back at you and nodding solemnly. Tempest can't help, but he's just... He's reached a hand into one of his pockets and he's holding on to the sharp cutlery. Look as if his arms crossed, but they're in his pockets, holding on to the wrench and the sharp cutlery. Yeah, they don't, uh, they don't appear to uh, be attempting any hostilities here. Uh, but they do, like, uh, commence, like, their eating and drinking while staring at you. And will turn from his drink and look at Tempest. Tempest is hard you, you, staring at these dwarfs. You a little looks over to the dwarfs, looks at you. Problem? I get the feeling some uh, old friends. Looks over at dwarfs, looks back. Dwarves are very interested in Tempest. What Tempest, looks like um, a. Chewing a bit of uh, baked goose, nodding slowly, pulling the knife out of his mouth. For some reason I'm getting the feeling not the best kind of friend. You may have overheard uh, I do not have the best of relationships with uh, most dwarves. Well, we never had that story time. No, I get a feeling I may need to catch up on you because I may have some visitors soon. Oh, I'll, I'll remember to keep myself ready. Tempest um, withdraws his hands. There's nothing in the hands, though. And he actually purposefully turns to look at Leon with a sort of a, a, sort of a grim look. Leon quite clearly makes it to Tempest. Yeah, you know, he's still facing in the direction, so he can still see if they move. And Tempest has a look over to the rest of the party, just in case to see if they've twigged what's happening. Chances are, Lord Inator's probably seen this. Lord Inator has turned back to the bar. He gives no fucks. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. I don't mind that then. He has a lot of notification of Grimmie. Thomas would have probably is... noticed that something is going on. Sure, as, sure, sure. Uh, as he kind of leans over to Tempest and says. Remember, if they are going to fight you, make sure that you fight them on your own terms. What say we, well, look after our horses in the stables, like, right now, all of us. See if they follow. Fogus is upstairs at the moment. Oh, of course he is. Uh, I'll go get Fogus. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be back in a moment. Liam will head upstairs. Vargas knocks on the door. So is there anything much to do with it? I've claimed you already. Um, Vargas just says, enter. 
opens the door, looks in. Yeah. Foy's just sitting by the window looking out. Um, there is a minor possibility of trouble downstairs. Can you come down just in case it occurs? If not, you can come back in a minute. What kind of trouble? Well, looks down there. Our cube may have got into trouble. He's a cube again? Not yet. <laughs> 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 Not yet, so I'm, I'm planning to look at it again. I see. Well, uh, I guess I'll better be down then. Uh, Deb is a look at Hero and kind of, he's thrown off by the comment. <laughs> Not expecting Hero to say something like that. Leon comes out on the balcony, looks down at the two of you. <laughs> and Tempest tries to spark a smile, but uh, starts heading out towards, you know, the exit to the horses. Sure. Follows. Th Thomas will definitely follow. Kind of like faking yeah. a conversation as if we're just leaving because we've got something else to do rather than running away from dwarfs seeing if they follow. Fargus, <laughs> Fargus, didn't you enjoy that baked shellfish they offered here? I haven't tried it yet, actually. You really should. It tastes pretty good. I had it the other day. All right, you folks... I, uh, I certainly will. You folks uh, walk out into the town center, off in the horizon to the south. You can see tendrils of smoke rising on the horizon. Uh, you can approach the stable without incident. Stable does have some some mounts in it, like horses. Well, I, I don't think we, we'd spe specifically go to the stables to look after horses. We'd just go in the direction and then kind of dodge into a corner somewhere seeing if they followed us. Sure. Alright. How long are you invested in to wait before I tell you to go do before I, uh, before you might go do something else. Like, how much time are you willing to spend there? Like 20 Temp minutes? I think Tempest will take the time to sit and explain to them that, uh, you know, properly that Tempest... You know, I imagine what's happened is, uh, I guess Thomas might sort of, you know, tell everyone this way, and Tempest will follow. And as you're all sitting or standing sort of in the alleyway, a couple, after a couple of minutes, you kind of, someone just might look at Tempest and go, so what happened? Am I right? Is that how you guys might take that? Yes. Who knows yeah. what happened? I'm well, just looking questionably at everyone because I don't know who's in trouble. Okay. I don't know those dwarves, but as, and he looks quite carefully at Hurum, as Hurum knows, I don't really have the best of experiences as, well, we went with dwarves. Mostly, I'm not seen favorably by the Dwarf King. As you all seem to have said, I, I'm i not exactly human, as you could imagine. I, just to say, I am a Forgeborn. One that's not mean made by Dwarven hands. I'm... As such... Dwarves are quite keen on capturing me and figuring me out. Especially the fact that uh, I'm a... Uh, well, he pokes himself in, with the skin on his face. It's like, I don't know of any other Forgeborn that have skin. Hmm. They unfurled something and put it on the table and consulted it while all very eagerly looking at me. Could be simply bounty hunters. Sounds like it. So how much are you worth? <laughs> Did you really just ask that? Uh, Tempest looks down and goes, Enough for a large entourage of dwarfs to stop drinking. He just raises an eyebrow. Well, if that's true, then... Uh, hmm. I'll have to think on that. No, you will not. Tempest can't help but sort of just appraise Hiram's look. He gets a similar look back. <laughs> <laughs> also, e also, even though that, that like none of this being tied at Leon, like the moment he said like, 
considering that idea. Leon seemed to have got very defensive of himself for some reason. Mm. You know, Hume has never, never considered the price of a stopping a dwarf from drinking, but a dozen of them, that would be a lot of money. Uh, the dwarves haven't followed. I get this, thing, this suspicion that uh, they're more going to pass on that I'm here. Okay, it's just some time. Size for a long time. If, you're really, if it really is that much money, then a uh, whole dozen might come. If you've escaped them before, then they might have learned. <clears throat> Who knows? We might be getting offers soon. Since you seem to trust us somewhat. At that mention, Leon looks at Dohirim, clearly trying to judge if he would accept an offer or not. <laughs> he just shrugs, giving a, hiding a slight smile. So, where do we go now? The bandit camp or, well, whatever is on this map. He sort of pulls out the map, points at it. Could be their treasure hideout. Seems to be on the beach. I would doubt they built a fort there. Too visible. In which direction? To the north, right? I, I think so. That direction on the map. I don't know if we uh, get told what direction that was. The, the vague directions indicated that uh, it would be along full catch bay north of Foghaven. So, mm. let's review our options. We have so, so, roughly a day's travel. Uh, you're not entirely sure, having never been in the region before. So, and we'll take a look at that crypt when we're on our way back, regardless. I would say we should go to the crypt first. It's been a couple of days since I saw that strange glow from there. Who knows what might be happening? Still, if it was pressing, wouldn't they have come more to the. Uh... <sighs> they might be building up an army or something. The more time we spent doing the, the other things, it was something they needed help with. Surely, we also know that one of them, well, one of that family, signed a paper to kill us. I would rather well, not go <clears> into the lion's den just yet. At least I would like to know that this city here is not going to suffer an attack from behind as well. Would, would you like to go into the lion's den after possibly being exhausted? Just there's a day's travel. You won't be exhausted. Either way, there's something off with these bandits. I mean, why would a druid who is capable of controlling the forest beasts even have to rely on, on bandits in the first place? And why were they so intent on making sure that nobody would realize what happened to Meadowdale? Wouldn't Ajax want the townsfolk to be scared? I Indeed. think at this point there might be... I'm almost certain there's a third party involved in this. I'm getting Someone whispering who Ravager wants... as well. That's not a usual bandit leader name as far as I've known them. Someone who wants this whole conflict to happen. Someone who likely caused this whole conflict. They likely shot the druids to make this. the druids attack the city, perhaps. I, I do agree. not think they would besides, do that, actually. Besides, they have surrounded the city. We met them in the forest on one side. They were below it, and now we see that they're also north. Generally, bandits would prey on the most traveled road. The one south has not been traveled for a long time, and the one through the wild woods certainly isn't very safe or well traveled either. Well, the one south is regularly traveled, even if it's not popular. It was. Yes, it was. I mean, I believe they put a stop to a lot of it. This has turned from a soon to be assault on the town on an or in into an already ongoing siege. And the only way, the only reliable way to break a siege is to, well, go out there and do it. You're the bandits assault. seem to be the primary target here for us. You're telling us to counter assault. Yes. <sighs> Thomas the bandits is right. aren't going anywhere, but if Your they are is... massing at the Melkor Estate, they are going to grow with time. It seems a bit far fetched to assume that damn it. something ah. is what. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, using my fucking E instead of W. I'm sorry, I just need to sit here and fail. <laughs> oh, I see. Fucking oh, God. No, that makes more sense. Why was uh, it. I, I just think, like, why is it Manakai's sheep? And now uh, I'm just good, good job, Griffith. Uh, my own immersion has been shattered. 
<laughs> the sheriff looks at Tempest and says, What do you think we need to do? <laughs> Surely you can see that this is the more pressing one. If I were to decide, I would go into this forest and find this druid and this right now. But I can put my own personal that would be far thoughts too dangerous. behind me. The bandits seem to be the real problem right now. And we do have something that they care about located right here. If we find nothing of note, we will go back and deal with the crypt. Hmm. Tempest also, like, you know, he simply, all he does is he just pulls out the bottle of rum, spins it so the front is showing to Hiram, and goes, we also have this. That might get us in. I had no, almost will entirely get forgot it. it. Hmm. Tempest sort of slides it back into her pocket as if it never existed. Do you still even know if that's fresh after going into look, looks in the just looks in the jungle treasure we em, em, left the round left the town before? Alcohol it's doesn't sealed. doesn't go bad very quickly. Besides, if they want to drink it and it doesn't taste well, mm. all the better for us. The le- the least thing I would do to a bandit is give him uh, sour wine. Well, you know, if one of the bandits is drinking wine, surely that gives us an advantage. Fair not. Yes. I believe you have something there. Maybe not an angry drunk. <laughs> so, in this, technically, I think that counts as staggered or something. Surely, you know, half elf. Yeah. Tempest just looks around. He, it's obvious his choice was made for the bandits. He looks to uh, to Thomas and Tempers and nods slowly. Liam will look to you. <sighs> while while the crypt is something I am worried about. Sure, let's go. Let's go to the bandits and deal with them first. Fargus dies a little on the inside. He does. Leon <laughs> <laughs> reaches a hand out to him and says, uh, "Come with us, Fargus." Leon slightly dies saying that. Of course. But I do think we're making the wrong decision. But as long as we're going to the man to the manor at some point, I guess all is not in vain. We may have made a few bad choices, Parks. Everyone does from time to time. It's just the way of life. Damn, we don't need wine around. Get close to that. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll go ahead and uh, lift a curtain here. The rest of the night will uh, pass without incident. If there's any sort of role play that you folks wish to do with each other uh, before you set out, or if there's anything that you want to do in the town of Foghaven before you set out in the early morning, you're welcome to attempt it. I want to go to the senator's house and tell her that she needs to get things under control. <laughs> you're dumb. You need to fix your phone. <laughs> I, I will insist that. I'll say that a, that a child almost died today, and and she was nowhere to be seen. Oh, mm. it's a fair assessment. I'm also I'm also going to insist that Fargus has the bait shellfish and artichoke for dinner. Uh, Fargus will yeah he will have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, should Duo hear him actually head out to the senator's house? Uh. He will be greeted stiffly by a servant who is not Viv, and uh, told him that uh, told that the senator is not in, nor would she be receiving guests at this hour, even if she were. Oh, Tina hmm. expressed uh, Manakai's shock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry about that. I actually <laughs> thought that was. Oh I actually God. thought that laugh was you, Grin. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. Too much. <laughs> I, I I knew it was time, but it, I found it weird though because it was like an empathic link. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> oh, no, a view into man a guy's head right now. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, that is the uh, reception that Bo here was granted. He is not invited in. She certainly isn't fit for public office. Because Can nobody uh, do anything right in this damn town. Well, uh, to be Let fair, them have it. 
The whole democratic process, especially the senatorial one, is uh, not one that is often pursued uh, by uh, by towns and cities uh, in Arden, in that Ardenfell 13th age. We should become the new senators and take this town over. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That might be our chance. <laughs> Senator by force. You guys didn't know this was 13th age Kingmaker, huh? De facto. Yep. <laughs> we were looking for a new place to start anyway. Well, I, I know the first fucking building to build. Wall. That's a Caster's wall. Tower. <laughs> <laughs> Caster's Tower. <laughs> I can agree to that. Ballista Towers, yes. And then, then comes all the, uh, all the bees. That's right, yes. Just build tons aviaries of aviaries and, and orchards. <laughs> I'll teach that damn droid. No, no, because you'll you'll build those apiaries and he'll build he'll rise up an army of bees to attack us. Nah, <laughs> we'll make them mechanical bees. Yeah, robot bee cave. Oh, I I would like to see your craft check, please. <laughs> I can what, do that. <laughs> what we'll do is make a huge net system all the way over here, so fish can get in it but not get out. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. We'll we'll put put little put a put a field towards the forest with just little rocks orderly lined up, just to annoy him. <laughs> hey Ajax, suck it! Yeah, <laughs> look at this organized thing that you don't like. Uh, yeah, look at we'll organization. We'll come mess it up in the night and we'll laugh at him. Yeah. Right. Look at these filing cabinets. Yeah, we organize our <laughs> Texas, things. Texas, oh. oh. <laughs> We just uh, we just hire a, an army of gardeners to cut all the trees into nice spherical shapes. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's what gardeners do. They cut like all the tree. Oh uh, yeah. Sure, that would piss Ajax off. Seeing geometry. That would piss the forest off. You wouldn't have to worry about Ajax. You have to worry about the goddamn trees. Oh well, then maybe the goddamn trees have to worry about us. <laughs> Malachi, why are you so powerful at level two? You have limitations. I don't care how many force salvos you have, which is one. We are, we are more powerful <laughs> than most people. That is true. Yes. Not than the army of Trian. Oh. Well, we do have the power of Thomas on our side. We'll Thomas wait. is not an army of Trian. We'll wait, we'll well, wait we a few more minutes for can stand against the flood uh, and he will keep us up forever. For no, he will get us up once. Forever. Riffin God. Regardless. Let, let us go towards the, the map location. Find out what's there. Yes. Hmm. Waiting on uh, Griffin God to get back from his bathroom break. No. Oh, oh right. yes. Uh, That's why there was a little stalling thing there. You can certainly look at the world map, though. Yes. It looks oh, like it's not that far we need to travel. No. Maybe. That's too bad. All right. All if right. that is five days, then it's like, it's like here. <laughs> well, that's a long eight. That's along a highway. Yeah. That's that's not. So, so it's more like more like more like inside the little house on the world map. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't sort of like the Melkor State be on the way? Maybe. No, no. You not would be. You would be. You would be going along Full Catch Bay instead of following the highway. But if you follow the highway, it will go faster. You wouldn't be near Full Hatch Bay. <laughs> Not as near as you want to be. Let's go east to go north. It's faster. What? It's north. If we're closer to Isengard, <laughs> we'll be safer. Yes. After a good night's sleep and a hot breakfast, you five venture north from Foghaven along Full Hatch Bay. The day is cool and clear, with the sun beaming in the sky and a crisp wind fluttering your clothes. The snow has even begun to melt and your boots make a squelching sound upon the earth. However, you don't get far from the town before you all realize you're being followed. An easy feat in these weather conditions. Off in the distance, you can see four dwarves trailing you. They appear to be the same ones you encountered last <laughs> night. And they're not attempting to hide either. There's not a whole lot of trees around here. They're being pretty fucking obvious about it. 